polycythemia with a 24 year old man that has been on testosterone and he adds decadrobalin. What is going on here? This video is gonna be so important as I've made many videos on the effects of testosterone and steroids on the buildup of red blood cells. So I'm furthering that development uh, for you guys here. So let's use this clinical case, which is a real case. Obviously, I'm not gonna be giving identifiers for who he is. This is a 24 year old man that comes to me and he has been on testosterone secondary to anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism for two years. He used steroids from the age of 19 to 22, three years, and he ended up suffering where he came off and he was just not able to feel well enough after at least a year or so. So he has a diagnosis of anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism. And for the last two years or so, he's been doing very well, very happy. And we're gonna talk about the comparison of his CBC and his iron studies from his baseline to what happened when he added decadrobalin. Amazing case and such a representative case because this is so common, test and deca. What's going on with the red blood cells? So. He adds decadrobalin to his dose of testosterone, which is testosterone sipinate, 200 milligrams per mil concentration. He's taking half a mil every five to six days. He adds decadrobalin at a dose of 200 to 300 milligrams per week. He does it for four months. What happens? So, and this is like a standard case, right guys? I mean, he, usually you see more testosterone you know, the ratio of test to DECA is usually two to one or more. So you would think if he's on two to 300 of DECA, he should be on about four to 500, maybe six of test, but he wasn't. And he didn't have DECA DEC. So this was enough of the ratio of the combination of test and DECA for this man for at least four months or so to feel well. And he did it for muscle building. He just wanted to do it because he wanted to get a little stronger. He was very happy on TRT, but then, you know, men, this is reality. I mean, doctors are understanding and healthcare providers that these men are doing this. So you have to understand what they're doing and not smash them in the face and just say no to work with them. I don't prescribe, I'm not doing it. These are men that are doing it to themselves. So you have to work with them. Here we are. So baseline CBC is, that on testosterone for about two years, his baseline CBC, completely normal. Hemoglobin 15.5 grams per deciliter, hematocrit 45.3%. This, this is completely normal. That's not even upper limit normal. He's a young, healthy man, no risk factors for secondary polycythemia. We're gonna go into a minute. Now, he goes on the added androgen which is decadrabin, nor 19 drug. You guys know all this. Uh, he comes into me for the consultation. So what do I look at? We look at the CBC again and everything else, all these other labs. I do a full comprehensive review and iron studies that he's never done. So hemoglobin goes from 15.5 to 16.9 grams per deciliter, hematocrit 45.3 to 50.8. Now, this is not crazy. This is not massive polycythemia. Technically, this is actually not even polycythemia because the upper limit normal in the world on an H and H hemoglobin hematocrit is 18 over 54. And I learned this from the best hematologist in the world. So depending on your reference range, you, you may or may not have reference range related polycythemia, but if you went to another lab, it would be normal. Huge point guys, I know, I know guys who follow me and you watch the whiteboard stuff when I've done this over the years, you understand what I'm talking about. This is hematology on steroids. So when you look at this, I'm developing these protocols for years because this is without doubt the top five most esoteric, just unknown issue for what's gonna happen to you guys, all of us on testosterone for decades relating to the circulatory system, 
the red blood cells, and iron overload. Let's go. So his iron levels, and I don't have a baseline. I just have a baseline for his CBC. I repeat the CBC and I got iron levels. It's called, it, this is called iron studies. The iron levels, 231 micrograms per deciliter. That range goes from 50 to 195. So he's significantly elevated. The percent saturation, the iron sat, again, hematology guys, very complicated stuff. This is esoteric stuff. 85%. Now that is really significant. Any doctor hematology guy sees this, they're going to think, whoa, what's going to happen? You're going to deposit iron. You have hereditary hemochromatosis or polycythemia vera. So, but he doesn't have that. Let's go into it in the end. So this guy's percent, this iron sat is 85%. Upper limit normal is 48 to 50% max. His ferritin which is very interesting. It's unusual to see it elevated unless he really has the underlying hematology disorder of hereditary hemochromatosis or polycythemia vera, which most of these guys don't have. If you have that, this is, uh, this is really a problem. And I've seen a few cases. His ferritin 71 nanograms per milliliter. The range on ferritin, which is a storage form, it's acute phase reactant and very complicated. Got to be complicated after you, how you review and you analyze this. 38 to 380. So he's down to 71. Okay. So what's going on here with this process? So it's polycythemia, but it's really not technical polycythemia. It's a silent process. And that's why I'm bringing this to you guys, your attention. Because over years and years and years, it's the silent disease that's going to get us. Coronary artery disease. It's a silent disease. Things like prostate cancer, issues and changes in your body that happen over years and years and decades. This the condition is termed androgen-induced erythrocytosis. Every single man gets some of this erythrocytotic state when he's on androgens. 100 percent No one becomes anemic on androgens. If you do, you're bleeding. You got something wrong. So it leads to a polycythemic state, depending on if it goes up over 18 to 54. You guys, you got to know the numbers, guys. You're going to be on the app. You're going to understand stuff. You're going to be working with us on the app. You're going to understand your numbers and you're going to live a much better quality of life. So again, the risks, all men are going to see some type of increase in the red cells. Is it dangerous? What are the risks? So the risks are going to be androgens. <laughs> Most men who have this quiet carrying state that I've discovered, they, they're quiet and quiescent. And you add androgen, poof. And now here are the other risks. So it's androgens. He's on test and DECA. Genes. European ancestry is definitely a gene state in the, in the carrying state for hereditary hemochromatosis. When I see guys that are vo very sensitive to things like this, early androgens, and they're young, okay? Having a young man, it's unusual to see this, certainly in the iron studies. We don't understand, I don't understand exactly the implications and what to do. Genes, European ancestry. I see that men are sensitive to androgens when, and I check gene studies on these guys, very academic, I mean, who's gonna do this? I see they have a carrier state for hereditary human chromatosis. I've learned this a long time ago. So, but what does that do for the guy? Well, in the end, we're going to talk about it. Maybe you can't do this much androgen. Be careful. Treat the other issues. Now, age. Young men don't get this, this androgen-induced erythrocytotic state. Anything like guys like me that are getting older, we don't really know why. Despite weight-related sleep apnea and living in elevations and all these other issues, you don't see it. I don't know why. As men get older, they're just more prone to this, notoriously seen. Next, sleep apnea. There's no question when men have even mild obstructive sleep apnea, this pushes and has another force for increasing that state of androgen-induced erythrocytosis. Elevation. I have guys that live in high elevations, Colorado and down in South America, and then smoking. So again, you have genetics, you have the steroids themselves, the doses, the type of steroids. It's amazing that the drugs, we understand the drugs, the dose and the type. So testosterone esters and the dose, 
more and more, obviously dose-dependent fashion. And then dacodurabin, which is a NOR19 drug, this is classically used in the 70s for anemia. So we understand that. Another drug you guys know is classic, you see it with, is equipoise. So that's a testosterone-derived drug, but all these drugs have effects on the body's ability to make red blood cells. Very complicated. So what are the medical concerns? Why do we even care about this, the thickened blood? And again, the diagnosis is technically not polycythemia until you're over 18 grams per deciliter, over 54% amount of it. But depending on your health issues, you're not going to want to go to this level. I don't see DVTs and blood clots and heart attacks and strokes and blindness and all this stuff. I, it's rare. I see it. I don't see it regularly. And I have so many men I see, we're just trying to stay ahead of the curve. So we don't have data for this, but I tell you, it's concerning and you can't just let a patient sit there hanging out to dry when his hematocrit and hemoglobin and iron studies are going up off the chart. What's gonna, you're gonna deposit this iron in his blood, into his body, in his organs, in his heart, his liver, and his internal organs. This is the secret. So what are the risks? If you go to any doctor, any internist, any primary care that does, knows nothing about steroids and they see that elevated hemoglobin hematocrit, that's why they concern for you guys and they stop testosterone. And then you're, what do you do now? That's a whole nother issue. The concern is blood clots. On the venous side, it's DVTs, deep venous thrombosis, and pulmonary embolisms. On the arterial side, it's heart attacks and strokes. And again, we have no direct data directly for this. It's just a concern. So when you look at tier, even TRT can cause DVTs and clots. Is family history related? What else? If you have subclinical heart disease, get those calcium scores, get the blood pressure, look on the app, get everything for this. And you have perturbed it and your blood pressure is up, which the polycythemia really is kind of, we don't understand. Some men have headaches and blurry vision because of hypertension. Some men do get hypertensive responses with polycythemia, relative polycythemia. Some men don't. Most men don't. Silent process. Next, the sedentary state. We see patients and people that have blood clots from traveling on planes. After an orthopedic surgery, notorious risk, blood clots, DVTs up to the lung, you can die from a pulmonary embolism. So in the end of the day, the real concern that everyone knows this, by the way, the concern and what I picked up and I'm working on with my research and my concern with my patients, why I'm checking this stuff very detailed is that when the, the hematologist said to me, you know, Tom, Dr. O'Connor, in the end of the day, if these guys have all that extra rich blood that is iron laden and percent saturations, is it gonna deposit into their tissues, their heart and their liver, not to mention their brain and testicles? It's hereditary hemochromatosis. It's gonna deposit, it's de deposition disease of iron. You don't want that. That's my main concern and that's what's novel. All the other things I presented for the risks, the DVTs and the heart attacks, those are theoretical risks. This is something that I know is going to be a risk. So what do you do? What do you do? You have to lower the dose and get off the DECA for a while. And he was DACA. I'm stopping DECA. Obviously, he's all set with DECA. I'm not sure he'll ever want to do DECA ever again. He, saw, he was concerned. He saw the iron levels. He was very concerned. And it's interesting that his CBC was otherwise normal. So you got to be careful. Check his CBC. Check those iron studies. Iron, percent saturation, ferritin. And understand your risks. All the if you have family history of heart disease, if you have family history of blood clots and DVTs and strokes, if you have sleep apnea, please, all these things, you have to be aware of these guys. And you're gonna have to work around with the androgens, guys. And you can live on some TRT, hopefully. I've seen a rare number of men where you can't even give them baby doses of TRT because they despite their, they can't. So they have to not do TRT. Most doctors don't know what to do. They say, stop the testosterone, phlebotomize, stop testosterone. I don't know, let it come down, the red cells, um, let it heal up and then go back on it. And then you repeat the cycle. So there has to be phlebotomy. So I phlebotomized them once. Not this indiscriminate, phleb I phlebotomize every two or three months coming from these anti-aging places and guys in the streets are phlebotomizing to trash cans. I'm amazed guys, come on. So. 
careful phlebotomy, and then you follow up the CBC, which you'll see it go down significantly, and the iron studies. But you don't want to over phlebotomize because what's going to happen is you're going to end up looking a, a deteriorated state where you see ferritin super low, iron saturations low, and iron levels low. And I see men don't feel well. I know I've presented this before to you guys, and I know it's very esoteric. That's why I want to present this so aggressively to you. You want to work with the app. You want to get your information right from the app with me. You want to work with your doctors. Are you going to find a board certified academic doctor like me or a hematologist on every street corner? The answer is no. You have to understand young men, what you're doing. If you have too much red blood cells and what I think is even worse, chronic iron overloaded state, that's not going to be good. I've already seen one man where he popped into episodes of ventricular tachycardia. I think I presented that case. Thank God he survived. He had, this, he had the vest on for the shocking vest. That was a scary time for him. He, his iron levels were off the chart. We never even knew until we checked. I started developing these protocols in the last two or three years. I talked to his cardiologist, okay, who is, who's an electrophysiologist, and I ran the case by him, and he said, Tom, it makes sense, doctor. If you overload iron into your heart, there's an electrical part of your heart, iron conducts electricity. This man had, had non-sustained VTAC. That's deadly. Non-sustained is the key. They burned out, they, they found it. They found his area, they have no etiology for why. And in the end, we think this is a rare case where the man was living on testosterone and steroids, he's in his 50s, and silent, and he had iron overload into the myocardial tissue. The electrical system is there. It ran through the electrical pathways and it caused non-sustained VTAC. If it's sustained VTAC, that's cardiac arrest. Guys, thank you so much. This is a crazy one. I really appreciate all you guys so much for trusting me. We're cranking the world more and more. You gotta get on the app. That's who I'm servicing the world, guys. AnabolicDocApp.com. Thank you so much.